Crossing over in meiosis occurs in prophase one. And in prophase one, the nuclear membrane is still in place. So here, let this circle represent the nuclear membrane. Okay? With that circle representing the nuclear membrane, homologous chromosomes. Chromosomes that have same size and shape in a human diploid cell. There are 23 homologous pairs. But in this model, I just have for you guys three homologous pairs because as you can see it's difficult to build a model with 46 chromosomes 23 pairs and then it becomes very confusing when you try to explain everything with that in this diploid cell you have six chromosomes and now you have three homologous pairs and as we studied in section 3.3 this is going to give rise to four haploid cells which would be affected by independent assortment, which means that when they line up on the equator to separate, uh, the pinks don't have to stay together and the blue don't have to stay together. They could assort independently. But even before that assortment happens, there's a very big and significant source of genetic variation. And I'll just use this biggest chromosome here as my model to explain that. Each chromosome is really made up of a pair of chromatids held together by the structure called the centromere. I'm going to put some alleles. Here is the allele for gene A. Remember, these chromatids are really copies of the same thing. So if that's dominant A, this also has got to have dominant A. If I put a recessive C here, this would have to be a recessive C. If I put um, a big B here, this would have to be a big B here. And if on this one I put all of the opposites, two little A's, two big C's, two little B's. So this is one parent's chromosome. Let's say this is dad's chromosome and this is mom's chromosome. You are about to make your own set of gametes. Crossing over happens. So this little section here that carries the recessive little a, it could extend itself and cross over like that there. That is called a chiasma, a crossover point. Once this kind of crossing over is happening here, what's going to happen next? This piece is going to break. This blue piece is going to break and it's going to join with the pink. So what you have now, it's a new combination of genes altogether, isn't it? Same thing is happening like, let's say, over here combination of genes coming into existence and what you have when meiosis finishes what you would have is this would become one thing by itself this would become one thing because meiosis finishes and you have four different cells don't you when meiosis is complete you have four cells being the result and how could those four cells be carrying four different things? It's because you have crossing over happening. Then you'll have one chromosome that's completely blue. So one of a man's sperm cell might be carrying a completely blue. Another one would be carrying this pink with two blue ends. Another one would be carrying a blue with two pink ends. And another one would be carrying a complete pink. And then think that there are 23 pairs where this can happen. And it doesn't just happen at two little points. It happens at lots of points. Little points here and there crossing over. So there's a lot of variation that comes about because of crossing over.